Hello and welcome. Today we are talking about Dante Alighieri's Inferno. So, the Inferno is part of a three chapter epic poem known collectively as the Divine Comedy. And it has three parts in it it has Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso, Hell, Purgatory and paradise or heaven we're reading the first part which is hell because for some reason this is the most famous and widely read part of Dante's divine comedy so what do we need to know in terms of background for this piece Dante Alighieri is often referred to as the father of the Italian language now why is that well he was not the first person to talk in Italian and presumably not the first person to write in Italian, but until his time in Europe, Latin was the language of educated people, so all legal documents and letters and reports were written in Latin, and poetry, and particularly epic poetry, like what we're going to read here, was written in Latin too, but Dante broke with tradition and decided to write in his native tongue and he was from Florence so he spoke a Florentine dialect of Italian he was the first person to write in this version and so Florentine dialect became the formalized version of Italian and so he is considered the father of the Italian language for this reason so that's one of the things that makes this piece extremely famous um, to understand it a little bit better, you also need to know about the politics of the time. Now, we could go into depth and depth and depth about the politics of the time, but we won't do that. Just suffice to know that there was a lot going on at the time and that Dante was kind of right in the center of it all. If you read the introduction to it, which I suggest, which I strongly recommend that you do, you will see that Dante was part of a group known as the Gulfs, and particularly the White Gulfs. So what was happening, uh, remember this is his life spanned from the end of the 1200s to the early 1300s. So this was long before the Reformation had taken place. The Catholic Church was the church. It was the most powerful organization in Europe and essentially pretty much one of the most powerful organizations in the world. But it controlled the politics of Europe. It controlled very much the, the, the politics of Italy. The Pope would be the most powerful person on earth. Uh, he had supporters and he had people who were trying to get him out of power. Now the Gulfs to which Dante had belonged did support the Pope. Although Dante was a kind of proponent of a separation of church and state. But at this time that did not yet exist. The church, the Catholic Church, had enormous political power. The Pope Boniface was also quite corrupt, as many popes had been. And um, the Gulfs who'd supported the Pope then split again into the White Gulfs and the Black Gulfs. The White Gulfs was Dante's side. They were now against this Pope because he was so corrupt. The Black Gulfs still remained loyal to him. Dante then left Florence, which was a city state. And while he was away, the Black Goofs decided that he was banned and that he would not be allowed to enter back into the city again. So he then spent the rest of his life in exile, not able to get back to his family who were inside Florence. And he lived sort of, you know, on the outskirts, wandering around from town to town, sitting in taverns and writing this poem. This became one of the most famous pieces of literature in, in, in history. Uh, so you understand that you will see why there are all these references to politics to Florentine politics to particular uh, players in the Florentine political game to enemies of Dante who he places in his v version of hell you also see a lot of popes who appear in hell so you can understand why because he was you know had a resentment towards the papacy so <clears throat> that's some of the political background that you need to know this over here, this is the image of Dante's Inferno, which you will find in your book. And this will be a friend of yours because it gives you a map of the Inferno, of the hell that Dante moves through.
So what exactly happens in this whole story? There's a narrator, a narrator of this poem, uh, and the narrator is Dante himself. And in actual fact, for a long time after this poem was written, people believed that what he was describing had actually happened to him, that he was given a journey through hell and through purgatory and finally into heaven. Uh, today, people more view this as a work of uh, poetic creation than as something that actually happened to him. But nevertheless, that is how it was read at the time. So he has a guide who guides him through these layers of hell and then through purgatory, but who cannot enter into heaven. And this person is Virgil. Now, Virgil, as you may know, is the man who wrote the Aeneid. And he was the great Roman poet. He was the great writer of Latin. So we can think of it as him being Dante's guide because he came before Dante in the literary tradition. He wrote epic poetry in Latin. So Dante is following after him because he is using the same styles and techniques of epic poetry that Virgil, the master, had used before him. But Dante is different to Virgil as well because Dante is a Christian and Virgil was a pagan who was born in the time before Christ. So in this uh, journey through the various layers of hell, purgatory and heaven, Virgil can only go as far as purgatory. He can't go all the way into heaven because he was not a Christian. And you will notice right at the very beginning that there are also uh, a variety of pagans known as the virtuous pagans. And in Dante's conception of hell, they are not actually like burning in hell and being punished by demons and whatnot, but they are in this kind of uh, in-between state. They can't go into heaven, but they're not being punished, and so they don't have to go down into hell. So um, that's the basic large structure of it. Dante is being midway through his life. He says he wandered off the straight path. And he was lost in this dark woods. And then Virgil met him and guides him all the way through hell, through purgatory, eventually up to heaven. And then Dante comes back to earth and, okay, he can tell people about what he's experienced. So it's also seen as a kind of a metaphor for spiritual development and spiritual growth. Dante had left the straight path. He had strayed. He had become corrupted by sin. He then got to see a vision of, of what happens to you if you become too corrupted by sin and then he got a vision of what would happen to you if you became virtuous and returned to God and the path of light and so this is uh, a kind of complex uh, in um, complex metaphor for spiritual development but it is also a literal journey through hell so okay um, what else to know about this? There are various rings of hell that you will see going from the top all the way down to the very bottom. And in the very, very bottom, I don't want to give it all away, but I suppose this is kind of obvious that the very bottom is Satan himself. He is trapped down in the last ring of hell. And you'll meet there are some particular sinners who um, Virgil and uh, Dante see when they finally see Satan right down there at the bottom of hell. But before that, as they go through all these different layers, they meet different kinds of sinners. And there's this concept that is central to the poem, which in Italian is called contrapasso, which means to suffer the opposite. So whatever happened to them, or rather whatever they did in their life, whatever sins they committed in their life, they are having this punishment done back to them. It's like a tailor-made punishment. Each person is punished in a particular way. So, um, but it's not always directly obvious. So, for instance, you may see the lustful characters have this kind of powerful wind that is sucking them and hitting them and ripping them apart. So you might think of that as being, well, they were internally um, filled with the storm of lust in life and so now in the afterlife in hell they are experiencing that outside of themselves as this wind rips them to pieces you also see gluttons who are kind of living in mud and um, feces and it's pretty pretty 
nasty stuff that they go through. You see the woods of the suicides where people have committed suicides. Their souls are being put into trees and they're stuck there because they um, they they destroyed their body and life. So now they they are trapped in a non-body body in the afterlife. And uh, the further you go down, by the time you get to instance for the to the eighth ring of hell it's now divided into sub rings like little pockets and in each pocket you meet different kinds of sinners like it becomes very super specific so it's a long read it's quite detailed you have two posts for this one i'd like you to read from the first through to the 17th for the first post and then from 18 through to 34 for the final post, if you are off by a few, that's it's not essential so long as you go all the way through to the end. You can look at, you can consider some of the historical information I've told you about and see how that influences the way that Dante is writing. You can think also about his particular theological position. So he's writing as a 13th century Catholic and how does his idea about God and hell and justice inform the way that he writes. You can think about the concept of contrapasso and look at the different ways that these sinners are being punished for the things that they have done. You can consider the conversations that take place between Dante and Virgil. Think about the way that, that uh, Dante feels sympathy for the sinners but is not sure if it's right for him to feel sympathy towards the sinners. You can look at this kind of contradictory space that he inhabits. Uh, you can bring in outside theological ideas that you have. Um, yeah, take it in any direction you want, but pay close attention to the details of these different verses and the different sinners that you encounter as you move your all the way down to the bottom. And you can, you, uh, I'd be interested for you to write about your experience when you finally made it to the very end of this journey and what the experience was like. I look forward to reading your posts. Thank you.